Hi everyone, welcome to, to today's our quick five video on the topic of SOC modules. Today, I am Satish Sena, Principal Analyst at IoT Analytics. And today joining with me is Dave Dixon from Semtech. Hi, Dave. Hello, good day. Uh, yeah, my name is Dave Dixon. I work in the product management team for our module products at Semtech, and I'm happy to be here to talk about our 5G module products. Interesting. And to, uh, to just to understand to our to our audience, let's start you know from the very basic to understand what is SOC modules and how it is different from you know legacy and traditional cellular IoT modules. Yeah, so I mean SOC is a term that's been around for a while, but it uh, you know historically we've had uh, application specific ICs or chips and. Things like uh, processors or memory or DSP were always individual on individual ICs, and then be became the kind of the industry evolution of all of these functions all being housed on a on a single piece of silicon, and that's uh, that's referred to as a uh, a system on a chip. Yeah, in general, most of the complex integrated circuits that uh, we use today in all of our products are are really socs and and now that you know that uh, mobile broadband especially but uh, you know wireless wan in general is uh, is becoming more and more mainstream we're seeing more and more uh, kind of the soc type functionality being uh, brought into the radio chip sense interesting um, so what are the key differences when we say between a traditional and an SOC in terms of, you know, uh, applications or use cases when we're talking about SOC module versus a traditional legacy cellular IoT modules? Yeah, historically when products were developed, uh, you know, in the early days of wireless WAN, I, nobody was sure what the adoption rate of, of wireless WAN was going to be. So I you know, the choice was always to develop wireless WAN as an option to products. And so there was, you know, it was always thought of as an add-on. And then, you know, and that, and that was really driven, you know, you know, in the early days by the PCOEM community, who then came up with the M.2 standard, which predominantly most of our modules at the, in the mobile broadband space are based on. And that's, so that's a connectorized type of module that, uh, you know, can be added to a product, um, as a, as an option so not you know for you have a different SKU that has a wireless WAN product uh now we're today we're seeing the, you know you know 5g being mainstream uh you know it, it, customers and integrators are working to build uh, wireless wan specific products so you know wan is no longer a, um, an option that's built right into the product and so that allows uh the introduction of other form factors for wireless uh, radio chipset products like uh, LGAs. So those are solder down products and it allows much more flexibility to bring out many different interfaces. And, and so you can embed all of the functionality of the wireless WAN chipset and all the peripherals all into one SOC. So you have memory, uh, processors, DSP, uh, you know, interfaces to external peripherals all on one piece of uh, uh, one chip or one silicon or in the chipset. And interesting. So, uh, if I understand correctly, what we are saying here right now, it's kind of an edge device rather than just a a device to come connectivity. So, generally, the legacy connectivity modules are tasked for connecting the machine to machine devices or IoT devices, but their job was generally to send data from one place to another. Where now we are saying with SOC modules that you have processors, you have DSPs within the module. Now you can do a sub sort of edge computing within the modules. You can add operating systems like Android on top of that and do some of these uh, smart uh, uh, calculations on top of that. So uh, if I'm correct, this is what basically the, the SOC modules will go into, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, with as with the tighter integration of components, yeah, it allows um, yeah things to be much smaller. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, they were kind of working to you know reduce the bill of materials of, of customer platforms, getting down to uh, you know in decreasing the total cost of ownership. You know, getting things much smaller. The size be, 
you know, of the products can be reduced. Uh, you know, it, it, we can speed up customers' time to market because everything is already pre-integrated into the SOC itself. Uh, you know, lots, lots of advantages there for sure. Um, so great. Uh, so what are the key benefits what for the customers to go for these SOC modules? Is it power efficiency, reliability, cost, or performance, or all of them? And what are the key benefits for them to go for SOC modules? I'd say the, the primary ones are the total cost of ownership, just reducing the bill of materials, uh, reducing the number of components, you know, just, uh, you know, the... The, you know, the chipsets, the radio chipsets that we get from our suppliers already include the processor. So adding a separate processor, you know, that kind of doubles the bill of materials cost on the processor side. Um, you know, size with everything integrated into a smaller uh, chipset, the size of the products can be reduced. We're now sharing RAM and flash with, uh, with the application, uh, between the application and the modem itself. Um, time to market. There's all kinds of uh, advantages of having pre-integrated. You don't have to uh, integ integrate and go through all the, the interface integration between a host processor and the modem. Uh, that's already done for you. Um, uh, performance is an interesting one. We have uh, if you're using a dedicated host processor, uh, you know the, on the market you've got everything from you know lower performance single core processors all the way to you know eight plus twelve core uh, processors that can do you know high you know uh, really high end computing. With the five G chipset, we we kind of hit the middle of the road there. We have a you know quad core processors on the product, um, so that'll hit a, a particular market. Um, you know enough to drive a mobile broadband, but maybe not so much for a, a, a super high end computer, of course. Interesting. So smaller form factor will will lead to a total cost of one lower total cost of ownership here, um, and obviously the higher performance uh, capability um, from a application point of view where you see the drivers are is it smart metering is it logistics is it fixed wireless access is it industrial aspect where is the drive driving uh, factor will be there for soc modules yeah that's a great question uh, the, the, you know the you know our journey i think on this uh, uh, uh these soc modules is really just beginning uh you know it's definitely starting at the higher end on the mobile broadband side the initial demand is really for the value uh, rotor products so the ones that are really cost sensitive that uh, you know don't need the highest performance and routing capabilities um so that's the starting point and then the next evolution is in the the higher end of the mobile broadband space where we have uh, pre-integrated peripherals for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth already in the in the modules, and we can bring all those interfaces out on the an LGA product. Um, and so we go from there, and then we go down into let's say like a red cap product. So that's like a call of that a higher end sensing type of product. So we can do machine monitoring. We can do things. We can do a little bit. Of, we can do command and control for drones. We can do all, a little bit of edge processing in the in those types of products. And then we get it down into the, the metering space. So the LPWA products where though, you know, we look at those as more of being um, kind of a MCUs type. So, you know, not so such a high end processors on those products. But at least you can do a little bit of edge computing and, and minimize the amount of uh, data that's actually sent over the air. So you know the, there's opportunities at all at both or kind of all ends of the spectrum for this. Interesting. So with the applications where uh, you can have you know leverage the more computing at the edge, those will get a more traction easily uh, with the SOC models. That completely makes sense, and. With that topic, that we also come to the picture that which technology will get more traction? Is it LPWA, Cat1, BIS is now there, and you, we talked about that, some of them, but I want to understand from a red cap, and obviously 5G is one of them which will drive it, uh, if I understand correctly, but which of them you think will we have the strongest adoption based on these SOC modules? Yeah, that's a, another great question. Um, a lot of this is going to be driven from the, the radio chipset suppliers and what uh, processing power or opportunities they build into the chipsets themselves. Uh, currently, these days, we're uh, a little bit limited on the applications uh, 
based on the amount of RAM that we can attach to the to the chipset and have on board on the SOC. Um, and so that that's a little bit limiting our applications. Um, and so if we look at on the mobile broadband space, you know, it's trying to open that up and, you know, have bigger applications with more RAM. At the moment, uh, there's a, it's the mobile broadband space is hitting a particular market. As we go down in the stack, um, you know, we get to the LPWA market and, you know, there may be just a sweet, a, a super sweet spot there where you're looking at things that are battery powered and uh, looking at you know more sensing uh you you need a little bit of that compute power at the edge to, to you know minimize the amount of uh, radio transmissions that you're doing but also that edge compute takes a little bit of power as well so it's a real balance there so it's it's really hard to say which one's gonna in in the long run like we fast forward five years from now which one's gonna kind of win the race of the the kind of killer applications for the soc Interesting, interesting. So there, it's a kind, kind of open game, which way, wherever the technology leads to, wherever more computing required at the edge, we will see the adoption. And obviously 5G uh, will have a higher bandwidth of data required to send, and it makes sense there to have more and more computing at the edge. And RedCap will also, I guess, came into the picture because we saw RedCap are adding video surveillance uh, use cases, which was kind of surprising to see and completely makes sense with this kind of chipsets going into the red cap environment where you can have a lot of computing at the edge with those video surveillance. Completely makes sense to me. Uh, from a Semtech point of view, if I want to understand, you know, uh, how your portfolio is going to be changed, uh, how your customers, uh, you know, affect or expect a roadmap from here. How do you explain to your audiences, like, you know, Semtech is adding this as a portfolio, or this is, will be part of a new portfolio, how this will affect the whole roadmap of the Semtech uh, cellular more IT modules? Yeah, this is happening today. I mean, our, our roadmap includes uh, uh, products that embrace this SOC methodology, our LA9 series, so LA standing for the LGA versions, um, you, know, it, you know, we provide integrators uh, access to a, a GitHub repository where they can uh, download a complete environment that where they can build their own OpenWRT Linux image for the apps processor on our 5G modules. Um, we provide pre-integrated the kind of the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth drivers. Um, and they'll have access to our, our SDK, so our standard Linux SDK that they would have built on or used on their uh, external host processors that we would have provided them in the past is now pre-integrated onto the onto the SOC. We have sample apps in the, on all the tools they need to build that whole app, app image and put it right onto the uh, apps processor and develop products from there. Now that starts at the at the higher end of 5G and we're, you know, moves down to the, the red cap modules, the architecture, even though the processor is not quite as powerful, the software architecture and everything is just the same and it continues to, uh, it will continue to evolve down the, uh, the, the portfolios until it gets into all, kind of all of our module products. Great, thanks. Thanks Dave, that was a very insightful discussion and uh... Feel free to uh, follow this link, uh, register for the link for our uh, webinar where we will discuss in depth about SOC modules. All right, thank you. I was happy to, happy to be here. Thank you.